What's going on guys, it's Cameron here. Welcome back to another video. Uh, today we are going to be discussing off-grid communication devices. Specifically, these little Meshtastic ESP32 boards. Um, this is from Lilygo. Uh, I got this off AliExpress. You can get these on Amazon and whatnot. I'll put both links down in the description. But basically what these are are little uh, mini communication devices. Uh, I will refer to them as glorified SIM cards, which basically only allows you to do um, texting uh, with other users that have one of these and connected to their mobile devices. And it has GPS on it installed as well. So basically you can ping out your GPS location on, on the mesh network and basically communicate with other people. So installed on this is the Meshtastic firmware. I uh, don't really remember what version I have. The Meshtastic firmware is a, it is a software that is installed on this device, which basically allows for mesh communications with like multiple of these. So basically this device can communicate to this one. And I will discuss what this is in a little bit, but uh, basically you connect your phone to this and you connect your other phone to this, you send a message, this will relay it to this box and this will relay it over Bluetooth back to your phone. You can communicate right back. We'll send it to this device and back to your uh, mobile device. So if you had three, um, how that would work is basically it will send it out to all devices. And if the if it recognizes that if it's part of the same talk group or if it's meant for that specific person, then uh, it will also communicate or uh, pretend this is another node. If these two couldn't communicate with each other, uh, but this one could, this would send it here and that would send it here and then vice versa. Uh, so that's how that worked. Or if this was on top of a mountain or in a drone or something, uh, they could talk even though these don't have direct communication or line of sight to each other. So that's basically how the mesh, mesh network works. Some use cases for it, uh, you could probably set up a search and rescue team um, you can hand out these little radios to each other and they will mesh together. Um, if you had enough of them, they probably could communicate without a base station. Uh, but if you were having issues, uh, communication issues in general, you could probably put this up in a tree or really high up if you're on top of a mountain, pick the highest peak, or send it up in a drone with high loader times, um, which is a project I want to work on, um, but will give you a good line of sight to all the nodes and they can all communicate. You can all see the locations on the map, which I'm not gonna show you just because I don't wanna dox myself. Yeah, that's basically how this works. I got these cases. There's a little gasket um, or cover for the buttons, but this case is from a uh, guy online. I just downloaded his STL files and 3D printed it. I will put it down in the description. Um, basically, I printed the case out of PLA+. Plus. Uh, I should have used ABS, but I'm having ABS issues trying to print that out. Um, and getting clogged, so I gotta figure that one out, but I'm working on getting ABS cases for it. Yeah, but the guy did a great, great job. You can get two different batteries. I have 18650 in here right now. Um, that's what most of these come with, but there's a 21700 battery as well, if you get that specific model. Um, but yeah, this 18650. Battery life is okay. Uh, can't really expect much. Uh, if you go for the RackWiz block, which is another version, another hardware, uh, type that you can get for the mesh tastic devices. Basically, it will lower your power consumption and it's probably recommended to use for base station boxes such as this one, but I just had these, I bought them. They're pretty cheap, $35, another like two bucks in plastic uh, and like a $10 or $5 um, 18650 battery. So uh, they're pretty neat. I think they're really cool. Uh, I got two and a half miles as a crow flies from a coffee shop to my balcony. So that's actually really good with a bunch of buildings and power lines and cars and other radio frequencies that are up in the air. I got two and a half miles in the city. So uh, if you had a bunch of these littered around the city, you basically could have communications, like very good communications with these if you just sprinkle them around the city. Um, but you have risk of getting them stolen, power is gonna die, you gotta make sure you know where they are. Uh, and they have GPS modules in there, so I guess you could track them, but... Um, yeah, there's a bunch of things you can do with these. There's a bunch of videos, just watch it on YouTube. Uh, they go more in depth, but I'm just talking through my current use case for uh, like off-grid communications in a SHTF scenario. Um, but yeah, that's basically what the device is and what you can do with it. This right here is a lithium iron phosphate battery. Uh, basically how this works is, uh, I'll put a diagram also on the screen, but 
basically you have a 12 volt battery connected to these um, like connector blocks. I can't remember the name of it, but they're connected to that. They're also connected to a 12 volt uh, to USB adapter. Um, and then that is plugged in to keep this thing running uh, as well. And there's a bulkhead connector on the outside for the radio antenna and a bulkhead connector for the solar SAE connector, which is waterproof. So basically this can sit outside indefinitely and be a base station. Uh, if I had a house and not an apartment, I'd mount this on a pole. It's kind of heavy, probably got to line it. But mount this on a pole with a nice giant high gain antenna just because, uh, why not? It's cool, radios are cool, you need communications. So yeah, uh, so that's how that works. Um, can also do a PLC here right now. Uh, so we're gonna connect to these radios. So we're gonna do a POC here, um, connected to both these radios. Um, this would be radio number one, this is radio number two. This iPad is connected to radio number one, this phone is connected to radio number two. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to uh, direct message. And uh, that was just me testing it earlier, but I will go and say, hello from one. Waiting to be acknowledged, got it. Hello from one, and we'll go low from two. So we got the notifications, and you get your like emojis work. Emoji worked. So yeah, it's basically how it works. I'm not going to show you the map feature, but yeah, on the app you can do. Uh, you see your Bluetooth um, running mesh testing version 2.2.13. Um, you can see your device, you can see your metric logs. Uh, I won't show you the, the position, but basically shows you your battery life um, as it goes. And you can clear and save all of that. And you can see all your settings here. Uh, you can see your firmware updates. Um, there's some logging and stuff. Uh, you're, you could add telemetry sensors if you wanted to. Um, you can enable things like um, weather and whatnot once you get it installed. Um, you got your test, range tests. Um, yeah, you got, you got a lot of customizations you can do with it. You can you have your channels um, and whatnot. You can make a bunch of different channels. Uh, and you can have your users. You can change, I can change the name if I wanted to. So, um, but in short name. So that's what shows up in your, like as the users. Um, I would consider supporting them just because they do great work and I think this is really cool and very important, especially when you uh, start building out your communications inventory when it comes to uh, being prepared. You have your Baofengs, I have my Baofengs. Um, don't know how those are gonna last, they're just Chinese young products. Um, so I think two is one, one is none. So when it comes to communications, Baofengs are great. They're not encrypted. Uh, you could get DMR radios that are encrypted, like the Anytone uh, DMR radio, but that's like, $300, so these are 30 bucks piece and you can just text each other. Um, but yeah, uh, I got some use cases for these. Um, I will update you as I, I start playing around with them, but basically the plan was um, I'm going on a ski trip in January or February and it's a pretty big mountain and there's gonna be a lot of heavy snow, um, some true wells, that's for sure. And basically I'm gonna give these out to a couple of my buddies and we're gonna you just basically just have them connect, download the app, connect to their phone, and we can message each other in case we have spotty connection up on behind a mountain or something, or need to find someone's location because we can't see them on map, or if they went back to base camp, or <clears throat> uh, just want to know where people are at the end of the day. Uh, basically have these, hopefully the battery lasts, and if we need to message someone, we can. And yeah, that's pretty neat. I'll, I'll update you guys as I go through that entire project. Um, also working on a drone project where I have a, I'm currently making a high loiter time drone with an efficient loiter so I can set up, uh, these like waypoints within Ardu pilot and basically just have it fly in the air, set it to loiter mode, have it circle a certain area above me and have one of these on there as well. And basically it's like a, like a very cool overkill. Uh, radio that basically allows you to communicate with other people who have some of these and um, like Have you ever had like issues communicating you could always trust that this would communicate up with the drone So yeah, I'll, I'll update you when I get that I'll do some range tests as well 
there's a mountain nearby a few miles away, so I'm gonna try and, or a hill, um, you know, I'm gonna try and get to the top of that hill and see if I can get some pingbacks to this base station that sits outside, so. But yeah, that's basically all I got to say about it. Um, if you wanna get some, uh, there'll be links down in the description for Amazon and AliExpress. I bought it off AliExpress. Um, also links for the case, uh, the Rackwiz block, which is also a good alternative if you want to get it and build it. It's going to require a little bit of soldering and whatnot. But yeah, so that's basically it. Um, thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to hit me up down in the comments. I'll put all the links in the description down below. And yeah, thanks for watching. See you guys.